Hi, I'm Vince, and this is MMU Education. All right, you're not lactose intolerant. Now, before you get mad about what I'm saying, there is something called lactose intolerance. It's usually hereditary, and it usually happens in children. But what's sweeping across the country is everybody thinking that they can't tolerate dairy. They are uh, dairy intolerant or lactose intolerant, or they just think, hey, I can't have dairy and I can't eat dairy. And this is a terrible concept for people to adopt and a narrative to adopt about dairy being unsafe. So we're here to unpack that narrative. First, people have a deep misunderstanding on when they say the word dairy, they're actually representing a lot of different parts of the chemistry People that have problems with dairy may have a problem with one component, but they don't have a problem with all dairy products and they can never eat dairy again. And oh my God, let me stay away from dairy. Dairy's so bad. None of that is true. Lactose intolerance is a term that we, we throw around that we need to be careful. And they come up with this new term called adult lactose intolerant. And almost no one after the thousand people that I've worked with that say they have adult onset lactose intolerance actually has lactose intolerance. Almost all of them, in fact, 99% of them had food sensitivity or a lack of digestion in one component or another of milk or dairy byproducts, which we'll get into. So to understand dairy, I think we need to talk about the medicinal benefits. It gets a lot of bad press. Yes, pasteurized takes a lot of the nutrients and digestive enzymes out of it. Yes, using um, conventionally fed dairy cattle leads to suboptimal milk production. And yes, they do add hormones and things like that to the milk. And I do understand that. So if you wanted to stay away from normal pasteurized conventional milk, uh, I have nothing against you on that. I grew up on conventional milk. Uh, it was good for me at a younger age. Yeah, I don't drink milk today uh, in that fashion, but I do consume a decent amount of dairy as part of a Mediterranean higher protein diet. So wait a minute, I won't drink milk, but I do eat dairy. This is where the distinction comes into play. And I think we need a breakdown of dairy to understand why and why this is important for you. Dairy has a million different medicinal properties. One, it's, it's good in vitamins, but more importantly, it has healthy amounts of really good protein for you, like lactalbumin, also known as whey, also has other healthy fats, and can be really good for building muscle or supporting a well-balanced diet. The most important finding of dairy though, lies deep within an important molecule called immunoglobulins. Immunoglobulins are one of the most healing and important tools that we can use in functional medicine or functional nutrition for balanced immune function, optimal gut function, and optimal health. Immunoglobulins will take out all of the bad ingredients in your food gram-negative bacteria, get rid of LPS, lipopolysaccharides in the gut, get rid of toxic agents inside of your food. It does all of these medicinal things. So when people say dairy is bad, they simply just don't understand the science and they don't understand the chemical makeup of dairy. Because we can take out what's bothering you or we can fix the digestive problem. Now almost everyone can have dairy again and get the medicinal amazing benefits with none of the negative side effects. I think it's important to point out that as youth, most people that are not lactose intolerant, which is a real thing, but most other people, they can digest dairy just fine. Why is this? Well, one, their pancreas secretes plenty of pancreatic enzymes that digest lactose. All right. That's one of the big important things. Plus the, the, the GI tract is filled with an abundance of diversity of bacteria one of them being the genus and the species Lactobacillus acidophilus. This is a class of bacteria that release lactic, lactic acid that break down lactose. So as we get stressed, as we get older, as we eat pro-inflammatory foods, as we take antibiotics, as we eat a monotonous diet, which means the same thing over and over and over again, it reduces our diversity. That reduction in diversity irritates the tissue lining. It will start stripping away the lining. We have low fiber diets, which also do that. So you'll start stripping away the mucosa lining, and then you have less of the bacteria that secrete enzymes that help break down our foods. Plus, due to other inflammatory conditions, our pancreas may not be releasing as much digestive enzymes, 
which does happen a lot in lactose intolerant. There are some people whose pancreas does not release lactase, which is an important agent in breaking down lactose. And that's where a lot of lactose intolerance comes from. Over time, this happens. And then people eat a lot of pro-inflammatory food with dairy. So think of like bread and cheese, gluten, which is hard to break down, lactose, which is hard to break down, processed fortified foods, right? will have a lot of gluten and possibly lactose. So what ends up happening is we get a lot of poorly digested things that are floating around, bouncing around in the GI tract, causing havoc, which then creates symptoms for you. For example, if I were to drink three glasses of milk back to back right now, I would probably have to run from this filming and go to the bathroom. So it is true that if we get too much of something that we can't digest, it will create inflammation. That inflammation can trigger the immune system to then target specific components in food, which can lead to a food sensitivity. Hence, most people do not have adult onset lactose intolerance. They have a food sensitivity to a component of dairy, or they're not producing enough digestive enzymes, either from the bacteria or their pancreas, to break down a component of dairy. If you love this content, please support the channel by liking and subscribing, and please hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time we make a video drop. So before we go any further, let's understand what is in milk to understand the components of what is in dairy. Take a look at this slide here. What you'll notice is that you have your carbohydrates, right? Which is uh, lactose. So just people don't realize this. Lactose is a milk sugar. It's a hidden sugar. So when you drink dairy, if the label doesn't say any sugar, which most labels should be up to date, but today, but yours may not be, what you'll find is you'll see lactose and that is actually sugar and should count towards your carbohydrates. Then you have milk uh, solids, which includes the sugar, but also includes um, your fats. So there are um, larger molecule fats, um, some poly, some saturated fats inside of milk, right? Then you also have your protein in the milk solid glass, right? So that would either be your casing protein, which is a longer digesting protein. And then you have your lactalbumin or whey, which is your short acting, high potency amount of branched chain amino acids, which you know are great for muscle and supporting uh, protein synthesis, right? So these are all the different components. Plus you also have your digestive enzymes that typically will come some in the milk and your vitamins. Now, if you have highly um, processed milk or processed ingredients, they will lose the nutrients, they will lose the enzymes, and then those have to be fortified back in, which are suboptimal, and then don't lead to a good digestion uh, of the, the milk or nutrient profile from the milk. That's why a lot of times pasteurized milk isn't the best, right? Now, most people, when they have a problem, eat, have, a, have a problem with one of the specific areas of milk. They either don't do a good job digesting the carbohydrate, the protein, or the fat. And because it has all these different components, it can be tricky. Of people that are starting to have sensitivity to milk, okay, or dairy products, what they're doing, they have an intolerance to a high proportion of lactose. But they're having a sensitivity to a high threshold or to a to a higher amount of lactose. So for example, in milk, we'll take a look here. Milk has about 5% uh, lactose and then only about 4% um, milk fat and um, about 2% protein, roughly, okay? So you're getting low protein, low fat, higher carbohydrate content. So if you were to drink a lot of milk, that's a lot of milk sugar at one time. So a lot of people have a problem digesting that much in a short period of time. Okay, but that's milk, right? There are many dairy products across the spectrum that particularly focus on the solids. So whenever you extract dairy, I grew up on a dairy farm, believe it or not, you'll get a bucket. It's got a bunch of big, thick, white stuff on the top and then more light, watery uh, substances at the bottom. In the thick component is where you get most of your protein and your fat. And then throughout the rest is where you'll have more of your, your uh, lactose or your milk sugar. So it's important to understand that in the dairy profile, there are many dairies that have 
a lot of protein and fat and very little sugar. And there are a lot of products that have a lot of sugar and less protein and fat. Take like American cheese. It's going to have a higher sugar profile. That's what's going to set off a lot of people who don't have the right digestive enzymes or don't have enough lactobacillus acidophilus in their gut, right? So it's very important for people that are sensitive to dairy to eat things lower in milk sugar and higher in the protein or fat content, right? So I recommend for a lot of people introducing ghee butter or feta cheese, lower in the lactose, higher in the proteins or the fats. Ghee is almost all fat, so I love that. And almost nobody has a problem with that, either one of those ingredients in smaller amounts. It's a great introduction. Now, there are people that have severe food sensitivities. If you do, I really suggest looking at this test. This is an MRT test. It will break down all the different dairy products and let you know which ones you can eat and what you can't based on how much inflammation the protein, when introduced to the blood, creates inflammation or not. If it creates low inflammation, you clearly eat it. If it creates a lot of inflammation, don't eat it, at least for a while, eliminate it for a while. So most people, right, either have a problem with the, the lactose, or they have a problem with whey protein or casein protein. So casein protein takes a longer time to digest. So if you're not good at digesting proteins, you might get upset stomach from eating um, high protein-based milk products or dairy products. For example, like um, Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt has a significant amount of long-acting casein protein. So if you have a hard time digesting protein, you may want to take digestive enzymes like betaine hydrochloride to break it down, right? Um, in, in the same token, um, some people, if you have a gallbladder issue, right, may be having a hard time digesting milk fats. So you might want to take something like bile acids, like ox bile or something like that. Products like beta TCP are really good for breaking down the fats. If you work with a functional expert or functional coach, they can help walk you through this so they can figure it out so you can go back to eating a very important food group uh, in my professional opinion. But 80% of people, the problem is milk sugar at a high amount, right? So what's the key? How do you fix it? Will you avoid milk? You start taking lactobacillus acidophilus probiotics. Um, two I recommend is Ultraflora Balance by Metagenics and the other one would be uh, Flora Protect by New Ethics Formulations. You start taking that for about, you know, eight to 12 weeks and you start introducing dairy into the system, but starting with just proteins or fats, like ghee, um, things that are high uh, in the um, milk solids, like a cottage cheese, um, Greek yogurt, that's maybe the low in fat version, or hard cheeses. Hard cheeses universally almost upset no one. You can start there introducing it slowly. For some people, it would be really a good idea to take the probiotic and then take pancreatic digestive enzymes. So that way, as new bacteria begins to inoculate the gut, you're supporting with taking pancreatic digestive enzymes to help break down the lactose. And for individuals that do that, almost 100% of them can go back to eating, thriving on dairy, being smart, being conscious, observing appropriate proportions, and we can pretty much unravel the mystery that almost nobody has adult onset lactose intolerance. If you like this content, do me a favor, check out more videos from us and you can do that like uh, right around here or here. Check out the videos, thanks.